All right, so we can start. Uh, speaker today is our very own Abranil uh, with a description of an efficient algorithm for or collection of efficient algorithms for elliptical scale multiplication. So I think I <laughs> so today we'll be talking about some uh, algorithms <coughs> that are made uh, to calculate the uh, scalar multiplication curve scalar multiplication. And uh, since it is uh, uh, what I'm working on, so I'll be uh, talking about what I exactly working on by the end of this uh, talk. Okay. So, so first, uh, this is a uh, overview. So, some introduction: what is scalar multiplication? What are elliptic curves? Very really basic stuffs. And then uh, some examples like we can see some cryptographic application of uh, scalar multiplication and the very basic double and nine algorithm, which is the uh, most basic algorithm to calculate uh, scalar multiplication. And then I will talk about the improvements. And by the end, I'll talk about uh, uh, what, I is, uh, what I work on recently. So it is a generalization of SSC recording. Okay. So let's begin with introduction. So, we all know that Weierstrass form of elliptic curve over finite field is y squared equals x cube plus x plus b, b and b on the field, uh, finite field. And the points on the elliptic curve, the points uh, that uh, satisfy this elliptic curve equation, uh, uh, those points form a group, okay, uh, along with a point at infinity, which is uh, considered to be the identity element of the group. And what is a scalar multiplication? So given an inbuilt scalar, uh, so scalar multiplication is nothing but calculating or computing a times p, where p is the point from the elliptic curve. Okay. And so, point, uh, so why we use uh, the, what is the advantage of using elliptic curve group? Because uh, this is a, the inversion of a point is uh, comes very cheap because inversion or inverse of point P is nothing but x comma negative y P. Negative y. So that is the inverse of a point. So some example we can see if we look at diffie hellman key exchange, we do uh, the scalar multiplication of uh, when Bob uh, creates his public key and Alice both of them, Alice and Bob create his public key, they use uh, elliptic curve scalar multiplication, uh, sorry, scalar multiplication, and another application we can see when elliptic curve digital signature uh, algorithm, uh, we can see that at verification step we can we not only use uh, a single scalar multiplication, we we'll do multi-dimensional scalar multiplication. This u1 b plus u2 q, where p and q are two different points of an elliptic curve. So I'll begin with double and algorithm, which is the most uh, uh, basic algorithm. So what we do in double and add, whenever the input of the algorithm is the binary expression of a, of a scalar, okay, all we have to do what? We, must, uh, we have to compute A times P, and the input of the algorithm is binary expression of A. So what the algorithm does, whenever it, it appears one in the binary expression, it doubles and add whenever it's zero, it's only, it only doubles. Okay, doubles the point. So, by looking at this example, we can see that if I want to compute 35 times a point P, so what we do is we get this uh, uh, we uh, we get this binary expression of 35. Okay, and what we do whenever so we start with we start with P, we double it. Okay. Since zero, there's only doubling happening. Zero again, doubling happening. Zero again, doubling happening. But when it's one, I double the point and add. Since it is one, I add a point P. Similarly, 17. Then I double. I get 34. Since there is one, I can I add one more point. So that's how the double and add algorithm happens. So in this case, suppose there's another example. Suppose all the Binary expression has all one, so each and every step I'm doing double and at the same time. 
okay so this is the algorithm we can see that i'm doing double if ai is one the entry is one we are doing add i'm adding a point so then uh, Broward generalized this double algorithm instead of doing uh, in binary we can do it in any two to the power w array representation of a scalar okay so we get a scalar we express that scalar in, in, in two to the power w array form and whenever uh, by doing the same process whenever it's zero we, uh, we are only doing two to the power w times p and whenever it's one i'm doing two to the power w times p plus at uh, a point P. Okay, so we can see. Suppose, suppose we want to compute 50 times P. So what we do? And suppose my W is two. Okay, so that means first I need to do what? If my W is two, I will represent 50 in two to the power two array form, two to the power two array expression, which gives me two zero three. Okay, so so this is two zero three. So what this algorithm does? If, if it is if it is zero, then only it, it only computes two to the power two times t. If it is one, it not only uh, computes two to the power two times p, but uh, two times p also. Suppose for this uh, this example, if you look at, so so this is two p. First, we always start with a zero. So first we do two p, then I do two p uh, two in, uh, means two to the power two times two p, which is eight p. Okay. And since there is zero, I'm not adding anything here. Okay. Again, I'm multiplying this with two to the power two again, which gives me thirty-two. Okay. And thirty-two. Since th this is three, so I'll add three times p with this. Okay. So that's why that's how we are doing. Sup suppose for this example, again I'm doing three to three p. Then again, two square times three, which is twelve p. Then plus three p, fifteen p. Then two square times fifteen is sixty p plus three p is sixty three p. Okay. Yeah. So a is thirty five in that example. A is thirty five, not fifty. Oh really? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think I picked the same. Oh, this one. Okay. Sorry. So this should be thirty five. I'm sorry. So yeah, because I was working on the same uh, scalars. So okay, so this is how it works. So, so what is the advantage of doing this? Because now, since uh, bef uh, before, if we go back, so how many steps we were uh, it, it was uh, needed uh, in each uh, like in the in double and add algorithm with the one, two, three, four, five, six steps. Okay, so six many step steps steps uh, we had to follow. Okay, but now. Since we are able to express it in a shorter uh, vector, then if we call it a vector or two to the word W array expression, so we are down to only three iterations, three number of iterations. So that's why, that's how we can uh, compute this. Okay. Another thing is what, what. But whenever I'm doing this, at the cost of what? I have to now store more points, okay? Because I pre-compute the points in in a table. So whenever I'm adding this 3p, I'm not calculating 3p again because 3p is already stored in uh, in a, in a, another table. I'm just calling it from the table and adding it to here, okay? So at the cost of storing more points, okay, I am able to decrease number of iterations, okay. Another thing is like uh, since we have already discussed before, uh, since uh, uh, negative ne uh, like inverse of a point comes uh, at very low cost, like uh, comes almost as cheap uh, uh, as, as free. So we can only uh, we can also use uh, we can also use these types of expressions p1 minus p2. We can also uh, involve negative points. Okay, so uh, to do that. What we can do, we can record a number, a scalar, in a way such that we allow not not only zeros and ones but also negative ones. Okay, so that's why that's how 63. I can express 63 in this way: one zero zero zeros and negative one. 
this also gives me 63 uh, in binary, uh, or I should say that two array. Okay? It's a different kind of expression we can play. Recoding an, uh, a scalar into this, okay? So if I record that, so again, I, uh, I, I again I, if I follow the double and end algorithm, I can see that I, I can I will follow the same steps. Like whenever it's one, it uh, I'm add, I'm doubling and adding. Whenever it's zero, I'm only doubling. Okay. So what is the advantage of doing that? If we go back here, so how many points we were adding? Oh, sorry, how many group operations we were doing before? There is uh, one, two, three, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So we were doing five additions, five doublings. Okay. So uh, we were doing ten group operations. But if we include, we, we allow negative numbers to be there in the expression in double and add algorithm, we can uh, we can cut the number of group operations by seven. To seven, okay, because there is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, okay. So that's how, like, involving negative numbers in this way can be useful because it helps me decreasing the number of group operations that we are doing, okay. Okay, now we will talk about what is side channel attack. So side channel attack, uh, like, it recovers information, okay, by exploiting power consumptions. Uh, of and uh, from an algorithm okay so if we find some irregularity in an algorithm then side channel attack can be uh, used to leak some information out of it okay so suppose what kind of irregularity we are talking about suppose in case of double and add algorithm so there is an irregularity why because whenever it's zero i'm doubling whenever it's one i'm doubling and adding also okay so this is a kind of irregularity that can be attacked by side channel attacks, okay? How? We can look at the simple power analysis. Suppose, uh, uh, if we talk about square and multiply algorithm, okay? Square and multiply is just like the double and add, okay? So square and multiply is means whenever it's one, I square, whenever it's, uh, sorry, whenever it's zero, I square only, whenever it, uh, it's one, I square and then multiply, okay? So, so if we uh, look at the power trace, this is a hardware stuff, okay? I don't know very much uh, detail about how they uh, uh, how they come up with this graph, but this is the power trace, okay? If we look at the power trace, we can see that if this is my uh, binary expression, so whenever it's one, it's squaring and multiplying, or you can say it's doubling and adding, okay? Whenever it's zero, it's only squaring or doubling, okay? So you can see, so whenever it's squaring, it's thinner. Whenever it's squaring and multiplying, it's thicker. Okay. So looking at this power trace only, we can say these ones are zeros and these ones are ones. Okay. So that is how the irregularity of uh, double and add algorithm can be exposed by this uh, side, uh, simple power analysis. Okay. So we cannot allow zeros. That's the thing. So whenever it's zero. I am bound to do only doubling. Whenever it's one, I have to uh, I have to do doubling and adding. Okay, so this irregularity I have to get rid of. Okay. So what we can do? What we can do? We can get rid of zero. So how about if we can come up uh, come up with a recording that gets rid of all zeros? Okay, and it only gives you positives and negatives. So that at each of the steps, you are bound to do both doubling and adding. Okay, so what about that? Okay, so Muller introduced an algorithm, okay, which gives me a such kind of thing. Okay, so suppose so what he did, suppose you are given a number, okay, uh, let's look at an example. Suppose you are given this number, okay, 3064, and your base is 2 to the power 3. Okay, so, so in Muller recording, what we do, we uh, consider all 2 to the power w array representation so any number you give me i express it to express this that number to to the power w array representation then i get rid of all the zeros from that uh, expression okay that's how i get and uh, a two to the power w array ex expression of a number which doesn't have any zero in it okay so how we are doing that 
Suppose you are given like 306 code. So it, uh, if your W is 3, so I can I have to first express 306 code in 8 error representation, which is 5770. So there is a 0 over here, OK? I have to get rid of the 0 and come up with a new recorded uh, expression, which gives me the same, uh, which turn out, turns out to be the same number, OK? So how I can record? So what he does, whenever it's 0, he replaces that zeros with zero with negative two to the power double. So that means whenever it's zero, this will be replaced by negative eight. Okay. And what will happen to the next? I'll take the remaining bits and add one to it and get a new scalar. Okay. I, I will get a new scalar here and again uh, express it in two to the power w array representation. Okay. Again, I will repeat the same process. So first I introduce, uh, so I replace this zero with negative eight, then I get this, okay? Then I replace this zero with negative eight and do the same process, like take this part of the bits and I express, this is 49 and 49 can be expressed by 6 comma 1 eight, okay? In eight error representation. Now, since there is no more zeros, so the remaining two bits, I will keep it as same. So whenever I have it, it's zero, I am replacing it with negative 2 to the power w. Whenever it's non-zero, I am keeping it as it is, okay? So by the end of the day, I'm getting this as the recorded scalar. So this is now this. The new uh, uh, expression of this scalar uh, 3064 is 61 negative 8 negative 8. So that this is how I can get rid of all zeros. So that in each step I am I'm bound to do. Uh, like double and add or to the word w times p plus add. Okay, again, the molar recording is also not safe. Okay, there is also uh, uh, we can find an irregularity over there as well. How? If we look carefully, whenever it's zero, I'm making a change. Whenever it's not zero, I'm not making any change. So that is a kind of irregularity. Okay, so this also can be exposed by side channel attacks okay so i have to get rid of uh, somehow this irregularity and come up with uh, some algorithm which doesn't do so okay like it, it's uh, it's what it's doing is bit by bit analysis when it's, whenever it's uh, like looking at a zero it's changing it whenever it's not it's like keeps moving on okay so that's the kind of irregularity uh, irregularity so what is the next thing next thing is joy and constant proposed another recording algorithm which does uh, uh, which uh, does it in a very much regular manner okay and so the input of the algorithm should always be an odd number first of all for the for all the odd numbers and what uh, and how we will replace the digits with these digits plus minus odd numbers okay so suppose J, if I uh, do JT recoding, so this is suppose I start with 71. Okay, 71 is in in 2 to the power 2 error representation. I can write it as 1013. Okay, but finally, so what we are doing is we are applying this formula. But so this can be like this can easily be seen uh, shown that this is this keeps the number to be an, an odd number. Okay, so I'm replacing each of the bits here according to this formula and then I am uh, like I'm updating my A with the scalar and again applying the same process on the scalar okay so each time I am replacing uh, my bits so first time I'm replacing it by so this is three so it's calculating anyway here okay so every step I'm doing a calculation okay I'm not skipping any step Okay, looking at what the digit is, whether it's zero, whether it's not, I don't care. Okay, so that's how I get the recording using JT's algorithm. So now let's go for the multi-dimensional scalar multiplication. So if we talk about multi-dimensional scalar multiplication, that means if you are given a certain number of finite number of scalars, you want to aim and finite number of points from from the same elliptic curve p1 to p pn so how efficiently you can calculate uh, summation of 
AI here, like linear combination of PIs. Okay. So what this so stops in 1964 introduced an, uh, an algorithm which which does it. Okay. Uh, so and so what this algorithm does, it pre-computes all the points, like all combination of points. Suppose there are four points, P1, P2, P3, P4. It pre-computes like P1 plus P2 plus P3, P1 minus P2, like all combinations of, sorry, not P1 minus P2, P1 plus P2, or P1 plus P2 plus P3, P1 plus P2 plus P3, 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 all kind of combinations. And whenever they are doing, uh, whenever they are applying the algorithm, they are calling it from the table and adding it, okay? So, so that each step we are doing only one addition. So suppose I want to uh, calculate what is 19p1 plus 26p2, okay? So first thing first, so I have to express this according to his algorithm. I express this in binary uh, representation and this, uh, both the scalars, okay? Both the scalars is 19, this is 19 and this is 26. So what am I doing? So I am doing uh, first, so this is one and one, so this, I start with a zero, I, whatever it's uh, one, so in, in each step it doubles, it's just like the double and add algorithm, okay? So first it starts with zero, since one and one I add P1 plus P2, okay? So since one and one, P1 plus P2 is already stored, okay, in my pre-computation step. So pre -com in pre-computation step, I store all the linear combination of P1 and P2. So that's how, the, that's why, so next step, I do, I'm doubling and I'm adding these two. So zero means there, there will be no P1, so only P2. So that means two P1 plus two P2 plus P2, which will give me two P1 plus two P2. <coughs> again, for, again, the next step, I'm doing doubling since there is zero, the, both of them are zero. I'm not adding anything. Again. I am doubling this, it's 1 and 1, since P1 plus P2 is already stored, I am doing, I am just taking that point and adding to this, okay? So it's not like P1 and P2 I am adding separately, okay? It is already stored, I am doing, doing only one addition at a time. And each of the step I am doing one doubling, one addition, one doubling, one addition, okay? So suppose, uh, Suppose if we do, uh, like if we uh, take the help of JT's algorithm and, okay, another thing. Yeah, here also we are getting like zeros. So this also has this, that kind of irregularity, okay. It has zeros, so there is nothing, no, no uh, addition is happening. That's why we have to at least record the first Scalar, okay, so that if I get rid of all zeros, okay, at the topmost uh, row, then each of the steps I am bound to do double. Okay, that is why I need to get rid of all zeros at least for the first one, first scalar. So what I do, I record that with the help of JT's algorithm, okay, and I record uh, the yeah, I record 19 to this, okay? So if I record that, so next step we can see what? Each and every step we are bound to do doubling, okay? Because there, there are no zeros here, okay? There is no only doubling happening, okay? Every time we have to add something. So whenever negative one or one appears here, I have to add P1 or negative P1, okay? So if I'm doing, if I'm able to do that, so that every time I'm doing doubling and adding. Okay, so that takes care of uh, uh, the irregularity, okay? That can be attacked by side channel attacks, okay? Now, now what is the problem with this one? Problem means, uh, now negative numbers are also coming, to, coming into play, no? Is that it? So that's why I need to store not only P1 plus P2, but I need to store negative P1, okay, negative, uh, like P1 minus P2, P1 plus P2, okay? But one thing is to be, uh, like one thing we, uh, we can note that if I store P1, I don't need to store negative P1. If I store P1 minus P2, I don't need to store negative P1 plus P2 because negative numbers comes at like at zero cost. Okay, like inverse of a point on an elliptic curve. That's why if I store P1 plus P2, I don't need to care about negative P1, negative P2. Okay. So that's 
So then, uh, sign as a uh, column recording algorithm uh, was introduced, and uh, for binary case, obviously. Uh, so what this algorithm does? So the algorithm does the uh, first of all. This algorithm has two steps. One is uh, making a scalar all sign bit representation, like get rid of all zeros, okay, and only allow ones and negative ones. Next thing, what it does, it, it does sign alignment, okay. So first, let me talk about what is how it does the uh, how it does the uh, recording of the first scalar, okay. So first scalar is again they are choosing an, an odd scalar. Okay, so if they choose an odd scalar, what they can do? First, they will record this. Uh, in, uh, so, in, so uh, first they express that scalar into binary, and then they record it. How they are recording it? So they are looking at the blocks, which we name it. We name as bad block. Okay. So what is a bad block? Bad block is starting with zeros, and all zeros, and it, it ends at one. Okay. So zero 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 one is a bad block. Okay. So I have to replace that bad block with a good block. Good block means there is no zeros. So this is a bad block here, zero one. So whenever I see a bad block, I replace that with. Uh, so whenever I see a bad block, suppose this is a bad block. Okay, I replace that bad block with one negative one negative one negative one and negative one. Okay. So because this is one, okay, in binary, this is also one. Okay, so that's how. Whenever I see a bad block, I replace that with ones and negative ones. Here also, zero zero one, I replace that one negative one negative one. Okay, so that's how the bad blocks are removed. Now we get this. Okay, so next thing what we observe is we get a sign a sequence of signs. Okay, so sequence of signs is if it's one then plus, if it is negative one then minus. Okay, we will see that how. We can make use of this uh, sign alignment. Uh, sorry, the sequence of signs. Okay. So what we do in the sign alignment step, we take the sequence of uh, signs that we got from the last step, and what we do for the next scalars, we uh, we get a new recording of the scalars which follows that sign sequence. That means if it is plus, then under that plus. I can only allow positive numbers or zeros. If it is negative, under that negative sign, I, I will only allow negatives, uh, negative numbers or zeros. Okay, so that's how the sign alignment is happening. Okay, so if I have this, so from the previous recording, okay, we got this uh, sign sequence, and suppose this is my next scalar, okay. So if this is my next scalar, so first I will, so this is the actual representation, a uh, binary representation of the scalar. But after doing sign alignment, we can see that under plus there is only ones or zeros. Okay, under negative there is only zeros or negative numbers, negative ones. Okay, so each of the sign, un, uh, if it is plus, then it can only allow ones or zeros. If it is minus, it can only allow under that to be. A negative one or zero. Okay. So, so what is the advantage of doing that? So, if I sign align, if I sign align that, if we can, so we can see that if I do sign alignment again, like I was running out of space, so these are like two p one plus two p two, okay, like that, three p one plus three p two. I wrote it as uh, like double. Okay, so so first this this was my first scalar, which is which was like 14 to 87. So 1487. This is my first scalar. Okay, and next one was my sign uh, my scalar 1525, which was sign aligned. Okay, so we can see here the signs they, they are matching the sign. Okay, so what is the advantage of doing that? So if if I now, if I apply double and end, like Strauss algorithm, okay. So each of the steps, uh, since there are no zeros, first of all, each of the steps I'm bound to do a double and add, double and add, okay. But since the signs are equal, 
then I don't have to store positive and negative signs together. Like I don't have to store P1 minus P2. Why? Because if it is, suppose this is plus and this is minus, then that in that step I had to do P1 minus, then I had to store P1 minus P2 in my P computation step. Okay? But now, since I got rid of that, I ha only have to store P1 plus P2. Okay? Because whenever it's 1, I'm adding P1 plus P2. Whenever it's minus, I'm only adding negative P1, negative P2, which comes free at free because P1 plus P2 is stored, so negative P1, negative P2 is just the inverse of P1 plus P2. Okay, so that's how we can get rid of uh, uh, like, like the number of pre-computed pre points is halved now. Okay, so this is the advantage of doing sign alignment to uh, like save some storage space. Okay, so this is the algorithm. So this is the recording step. Step that this is the function they are doing. Okay, so again, so what? So this is also again. You can ask me like, if there's zero and one, I'm changing. Okay, not this one. Sorry. Yeah, if it is zero and one, so. Looking at like it is zero and one, I am changing into one minus one. It is zero zero one to the minus. So different time, the length of black blocks can be different. Okay, so that can be a question. Okay, this can be a this is again an irregularity. Okay, so what they did here is they looked at so first one they kept same. The next one what they did is uh, say two x one minus one is one. Okay, so this is. If you look at their function, yeah. So what they are doing? They are multiplying two with the previous number and doing negative one and replacing the next number. Okay. So what they are doing here is this is two times one minus zero. Okay. So two times. Uh, so every time they are doing this, so 2 times 0 minus 1 is minus 1. Then 2 times 1 minus 1 is 1. Then again 2 times 1 minus 1 is 1. So that's how they are changing in at each step. Okay, so now uh, what, what I worked on, like, the professor Karabina. So we generalized the SSE recording and sign alignment both for any k. Okay, they have done it for binary cases. Okay, so what we have done is like for any general k. Okay, for you can give me any number, I can uh, and it's k array representation. It may be two, three, four, five, whatever it is. And then what we can do, we can come up with a new recording which gets rid of all zeros and. Uh, only uh, involves negative number and positive numbers. Okay, so uh, so we follow this. So this is a theorem that we have proved. Okay, so if we have a number of length l, okay, so and suppose this is and and one thing we have to make sure that the number that you are giving me that is not divisible by that k. Okay, so suppose my k I fix three. So whatever number you give me that should not be divisible by k. Or by three. Okay, so any number that is not divisible by k can be expressed as uh, can be expressed in a like all signed bit representation. Okay, so if we do, uh, so we are yeah. So what we we do again? We look for the bad blocks. So now it now bad blocks can may be different. It may be zero 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 one. Depending on k, if it is k is three, then my bad blocks can be zero 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 one or zero 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 two. Okay. If it is four, then zero zero one, zero zero two, zero zero three, like that. Okay. So all I need to do is what we have to get rid of those bad blocks and replace them with good blocks. Okay. So what we do is, uh, whenever we see a bad block, I replace that bad block with this good block. Okay. Which is one negative k minus one, negative k minus one, and negative k minus a. This a can be this a is actually 0, 0, 0, a. Okay, this a is uh, uh, from one to k minus one. 
Okay, so for three case, this a, a, a can be one and two. For four, it is one, two, and three, like that. So, so uh, if I'm working with the same number of uh, same uh, scalar that we were doing before, so this is suppose this is uh, this is the uh, trinary representation of 1487. Okay, so this is a bad block. So what we do? First one is one. Second one is k minus one, negative k minus one, and third one is negative k minus one as well. Okay, in this case, there is another bad block here, zero zero two. Okay, so first one is one, second one is negative k minus one, which is negative two, and this one is negative k minus two, which is negative one. Okay, so similar way, we find the sine sequence. So what is the advantage of this? We can we, uh, we can decrease the number of iterations. Okay. And how we can do the irregularities? So, so again, like it may be, it may happen like some block is of length two, some block maybe length five. Okay, so there will be there should uh, will be an irregularity. So we can, uh, so we came up with this table. So what this table does? This is two comma zero. So the two is my x zero, and uh, zero is my x one. So I will look at the corresponding element on the table. Okay, so two zero means it is two zero, so I replace it with one. Okay, first one I keep it as it is. Next one, I will do this two comma zero position in the table. Next one zero comma zero position in the table. So this is minus k minus one. So minus k k is three, so negative two. That's why. Again zero comma uh, one is here. Zero comma one negative k minus one, which is negative two. So every time. I can go to the table and pick the number. So each of the time I am looking at two uh, like independent number. Uh, sorry, not independent. Means each time we are looking at two blocks, not blocks, like two numbers at a time. Okay. So this is a kind of regularity that we are achieving here. Okay. So again, generalization. Uh, we did the generalization for SSC is recording. Uh, and not only recording, generalization can also be done on sign alignment. Okay, so again, if we are able to do sign alignment, then uh, we can store less number of points. Okay, so that's why. So if this is the sign sequence, so what this theorem says, this theorem we also have proved that this theorem. What this theorem says is, uh, we can if if we get a sign sequence that is from the recording of the first scalar that we started with. If we uh, have that sequence of signs and they got the following scalars, we can align it according to the sign. Okay. So all we need to do what? If it is plus, then I can only allow positive numbers under that or zero. If it is minus, then only negative numbers under zero. Uh, sorry, negative numbers or zeros. Okay. So if it is plus for trinary case, I can allow 0, 1, 2. If it is negative, I can only allow 0, negative 1, negative 2 under that sign. So we can do what here? So suppose uh, my next number was 15, 25. And this was my, yeah, this was my, uh, this, this is the, uh, the trinary representation of this. And this is the sign sequence that we got from the first scalar. Okay, the recording of first scalar. Then what we do? We uh, express this in uh, like we record this into this so that it matches the sign sequence. Okay. So what we do is this is uh, so under plus you can see we are only allowing positive numbers and or zeros, and under negative we only allow negative numbers okay so that's how we align the sign so how it, it actually works Can you say only one so how we are doing that mathematically like if 15 25 I start with so this is a negative number and since we are working with k equals 3 and our n is 15 25 so First thing you have to check that this should not be divisible by three. Okay. 
So, oh no, no, not that, sorry. So first thing is that n is 15, 25. So first thing we have to see what we need to add. Since this is negative sign, so I need to come up with a number, add some number that will make this number divisible by 3, okay? So that number in this case is 2, okay? So if I divide, divide it by 3, so I will get 5 or 9, okay? And my first entry will be negative. Next, I'll do the same process for uh, 509, okay? So 509, again, my sign is negative. Again, I have to add something, okay? So which is in this case 1, and I divide it by 3, I'll get my next number, which is 170, and my new entry will be negative 1. Next, it is positive. What I will do, I have to subtract a number, which makes this number divisible by 3. So in this case, I subtract negative 2 and divide, divide it by 3, I can get my next number of uh, 56 and my next entry is positive 2. So this is how I sign a line, okay? The, uh, this is how I come up with a new, uh, like a, a primary representation of the number that agrees the sign, okay? And the sign that I'm in. And next thing is like if we we are uh, so we need to compute this 1487 P1 plus 1525 P2. So how we can do that? We can uh, like first this is the number and this is the sign alignment. Okay, I'll follow the same process starting with zero every time since there are no zeros. I'm bound to do doubling, and every time since the signs are there. Uh, the signs are same. I do not have to pre-compute the combination of positive and negative numbers, such, such as like P1 minus negative P2. I do not have to store because it cannot be like if P1 minus negative 2 would imply the first one will be positive, next one will be negative 2. Okay, so we do not have to do that anymore. So we only have to store the positive uh, uh, linear combination of numbers in our pre-computer says so that in each of the steps I'm bound to do doubling and one addition. That's it. Questions for everybody? Is it easy to parallel this? Sorry? Is it easy to parallel this? Parallel? I'm sorry. The algorithm. Hmm? Is it easy to make the algorithm parallel? Parallel to? Compute. Can you run an algorithm parallel? Mm. No. Sorry? Oh! It means like for different, like parallelly with different digits, uh, like yes. processors? Yes. Uh, For different like AIPIs, like addition, you're saying or like no, for the same, just this single point. So, so maybe the question is: Is there a strong dependency during the computation? It makes it very hard to parallel. Oh, yeah, that I'm like doing it right now. Like so. Yeah, we can actually. Uh, if you are given, if you give, uh, if you are giving me a, a scalar, uh -huh. okay. So you, we can like, uh, like divide the scalars into two different rows, uh -huh. and we can apply the same process on that. Okay. For any, so for for a fixed base scalar multiplication, we can do that. Okay. There's a trade-off. Um, so basically, there's a trick. It's uh -huh. not the like, call method or the delete call method. Uh -huh. What you do is at the cost of storing extra points and pre-computing them. Okay. The intuitively what you do is if you're applying to this table, you cut it in half. Uh -huh. And then you run things, two things at, in, in, at the same time in parallel. Oh, I see. But then you have the number of iterations by half, but then you do an extra addition each step. And you can do it with any slices, basically. Okay. So in principle, and it gives really good improvement. Oh, okay. The generic method that applies to approximately the case. More questions? Mark, 
Why do you care about larger widgets? Why? Why there is enough? Larger digits because uh, like larger digits will uh, make the main loop of the development like less number of iterations uh, at the cost of uh, more pre computation. But then you do expensive operations, right? So doubling is in place with tripling now? Yeah, so some elliptic curves are there where tripling is like more efficient. Okay. They are they have like very good formulas for faster tripling. Okay. So they have formulas for some some curves satisfy the like, some curves. Uh, have like faster quadrupling formula, some curves have faster quintupling formula, and some curves have faster uh, like tripling formula. So that's why like going into tripling will be like better in sense of like number of iterations in the main loop in difficult method. Okay. Well, thanks, everyone.